Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below and go and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like the video, please let me know down in the comments on what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at a clip from the China Syndrome called a uh, turbine trip scene. But first, what is a turbine trip? So as you can see in our diagram, when the uh, main turbine of a nuclear power plant um, trips, that uh, causes the uh, reactor over in the reactor vessel to trip. And what that means is the turbine is offline and then all of the control rods in the reactor insert in a span of less than two seconds. It's quite remarkable. And the reactor safely shuts itself down. Let's see how they react in the China Syndrome. He said, stabilize the reactor. Um, really, the reactor is quite stabilized already, safely shut down with all the control rods fully inserting as you can see fit. Funny thing is, one of my jobs was actually Jack Lemon's job there as the uh, shift supervisor. So before we go further, here's what I would do. And note that this is an abridged version. I don't claim to uh, be copying a real procedure when I, <laughs> when I tell you what we would do. So first off, um, as I said, the reactor and turbine fully offline at this point. First, the uh, reactor operators perform their immediate actions basically to ensure that everything happened the way it should have, uh, both with the control rods fully inserting into the reactor vessel and the turbine fully tripping. Every throttle valve, every governor valve that feeds the turbine, um, as you can see on this little diagram from the, uh, the line going from the steam generator to the turbine, that that bit right there is fully isolated. If not, if not, they can make it so by um, closing further isolation valves to completely isolate the steam system. And really what you want to do is to avoid an excessive uh, reactor coolant um, cool down with the uh, turbine still being online. You can, it's about just making sure the uh, primary, uh, by primary, I mean reactor parameters are stable. And then uh, after the immediate actions are done, they follow what's known as an emergency operating procedure where you check critical parameters such as the uh, reactor coolant system pressure, temperature, pressurizer level, pressurizer pressure, steam generator levels, everything, um, pretty much everything within that containment structure right there um, to make sure everything is normal and secured and everything should stabilize out at a what is known as a normal no load temperature a hot zero power and um, it's a pretty safe space to be in but again safety is the uh, overarching priority with anything associated with nuclear power let's see how jack lemon and his crew are doing Okay, um, they're concerned about a uh, leak in on, on high radiation. That is a sign of a reactor coolant leak, and he says it's normal. It is not. That does not happen after a turbine trip. Um, they have a leak in the reactor coolant system, and um, it has, when you're following your emergency operating procedure, it has a uh, flow path, a procedural flow path is what you're supposed to do simply um, raise um, reactor coolant injection flow um, known as uh, often known as charging flow basically make up water to maintain a uh, pressurizer level if it gets if the leak is large enough we have what is known as the emergency core cooling system um, just in case it's too much for the normal uh, reactor makeup water flow to handle 
corn, I'm gonna dump it. There's not High water in the core and he's gonna dump it. The core should be maxed out. That is normal. What you should be looking at is pressurizer level. As you can see on this diagram, the pressurizer is higher than the core. The core should be completely covered and filled with water. And the pressurizer level should have a, uh, a bubble in it, a bit where there is not water. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. Please go back to their stations, which we're gonna have a goddamn season. Hey, Jack! What? Look at this water level indicator. Water level's low. Uh, the whole one indicator reading high, one indicator reading low. <laughs> Turns out it's low. Mm, um, at this point... Safety injection should have auto actuated a long time ago. Um, you're still on scale in the pressurizer when that happens. If not, the operators need to manually initiate safety injection. All it takes is one switch, super easy. But yeah, and regardless of indicators acting up, um, it feeds off of a level switch that um, clearly one of, this was one of them failing high, it shouldn't matter because you have multiple indicators and multiple parameters that feed into safety injection actuation. So one parameter failing high is not gonna prevent something like that that should happen. And this should have happened a long, long time ago. <laughs> high pressure cooling injection. If you fail, don't you make this, Jack? What? High pressure coolant injection is an emergency water supply system as shown here in this lower right hand side. Um, he said V1 was tagged out for maintenance. First off, you have multiple of these. Uh, and if one of them was tagged out for maintenance, you would enter what is called a limiting condition for operation. There is a time limit you can operate with one tagged out for maintenance. Uh, at where I used to work, it was seven days um, for one for one pump. Um, if if there were two of them tagged out, it was one hour. And this is out of three. You don't want to have three tagged out. In this case, they said everything is tagged out, and they were still operating. That sort of thing would get you an all kinds of trouble not to mention you have completely degraded some of your safety margin to even be like that they should never have been in this scenario to begin with one train or one pump um, i say train a train is a term used for one series of uh, safety systems that one by itself can safely shut down the reactor and like I said, where I used to work, we had three of them. And there is an agreement with what is known as our technical specifications, which is federal law, that you have to have you have to have them. You have to have a certain number of them too, not just one. Hence the uh, time limits that I just mentioned. Wow. These guys put themselves into a situation where they were incredibly vulnerable and they're not doing the right things at all. Again, what you should, what you should have done is um, entered the uh, procedure for um, dealing with a reactor coolant leak and it would have you check all of your diverse types of indication so you wouldn't get hung up on one indicator failing high yeah um this is an old movie i know we've had the industry's had a lot of training since then but yeah the <laughs> 
operators in the real world are a lot better trained than that. And certainly a shift supervisor is <laughs> much better. There's much better uh, leadership training on how to run a crew than, uh, th th than this sort of thing. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.